all right guys welcome back to the channel thanks for tuning in if you're new to the channel uh here we talk about cryptocurrencies uh, i own my own property management company so i also do real estate on the side but um it, with numerai uh, this is the project we're going to be hitting on today it could be the next big thing or it could be uh, i don't know check out now more in this video this is what they're planning on doing being the last hedge fund so basically the only hedge fund so a ai driven stock prediction or a stock market prediction analyst so first let's start with the verse of the day um we're reading the proverbs one-liners um the wisdom one-liners so we're going to start with the ninth saying do not eat the food of a begrudging host do not crave his delicacies for he is the kind of person who is always thinking about the cost. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. You will vomit up the little you have eaten and will have wasted your compliments. So I take it like this. Um, obviously, there's different interpretations. Uh, what I take from that is, have you guys ever been to someone's house or been invited to something or given a gift but they give you that sense of feeling you owe them back. They haven't truly given you a gift without um, freedom. They've given you a gift that has a contingency. You must give back to them. This is what I take from that verse. Um, don't be that person. Don't be that guy who gives a gift or that girl who gives a gift and gives that grudging feeling like, what am I going to get in return? No, you guys have given the gift. Your selfish return you get is the happiness you feel after you've given the gift. Give a gift and forget about it. That's how you get it. Or that's how, that's how you give. You give and forget. Give and forget. Don't hold a grudge. Don't expect people to return the favor. Remember, guys, give and forget. I challenge you guys to do this. I've already challenged this in one of my other videos. I challenge you to go to someone a, a restaurant. Pick out your meal, get your meal. It can be a walk-in, um, fast food, drive through drive through is even better. Um, they don't even see who you are. Have the other person order. Pay for their food behind you. Say, I'll pay for whatever they, they owe. Or even in line, pay for the person behind you. Let them order, pay for it, and then walk out the door. Don't say a word. That's right. It's a good challenge. See how you feel. All right, so let's get into Numerai. So Numerai is the hardest data science tournament on the planet. So I got, I have two different thoughts about this. I feel like it's a good project, but then I, I, I have a second thought about it. I feel skeptical about it. It's not financial advice, but this is just my feelings on the project. So I just make these videos to tell you what I think of projects, and um, here are some projects and explain them to you. Basically, what they're doing is. Um, I explain it like this. So you have a bunch of really smart guys and really smart people. Um, I'll even, here, we can play a video about it too. But you have some really smart people who have some really great ideas, but they can't bring them to the market because they don't have the money to do it. They don't have the resources to, it, to do it. But in this way, they're able to put their information on the market and make money off it. How is it different from the internet? Well, this is how. Anyone can uh, put out information on there, on the internet. Whether it's true or not, it doesn't matter. It, they could just put it out there. That's what Numerai is doing. So Numerai is allowing you to put any information you want out there, but there's a caveat. You must stake. So you, you have to stake a portion to it. So like you, the NM, um, NMR tokens, which are the... Um, the uh, protocols tokens or the governance tokens, you have to stake those and in return, however many you stake based on your prediction and your predictions, right? You get a fee from it. But if your prediction is wrong, you lose your staked M N M R. So it almost allows the people or allows the uh, platform to get rid of bad actors because they're going to be penalized and lose money for it. So here's a quick video on it, just to kind of explain it. Renaissance Technologies with Jim Simons back in 1982. My name is Norman Packard. I'm trained as a theoretical physicist. 
I was a co-founder in a company called Prediction Company. When you get into AI, you don't often don't really understand what the algorithms are doing. They may game against you. It's speeding they up a bit. Coming. They're dealing with the numerical indicators. Quick tip, if you're researching and you're good at this, that itself, fast forward. You can watch videos twice as fast, or had, one and a half times. been approached times. by a lot of people doing quantfront over the years. What impressed me about the way Richard was thinking about it was this notion of the meta model. He was really thinking about how to harness the people out there in the world who don't use this as a day job, but people who are really good at big data handling, at artificial intelligence, at statistics, and don't have the resources to start a hedge fund. Richard has figured out, and was the first one who I've seen, who really figured out how to harness all of that. I realized that he had, for the first time ever, created a mechanism to capture the intelligence of the crowd that's on the internet, where anyone can participate, and actually apply that intelligence to the stock market. And it's the first time anyone's ever been able to do it like he did it. In the past decade or so, uh, one of the discoveries in machine learning is the power of combining lots of different models. If you have a bunch of models, you can actually do sort of like a layer of machine learning on top of that, where you combine them in a really smart way, right? So if like a guy over here sort of learns something that's useful, and then a guy over here learns something different that's also useful, like Richard can then go combine them and make it more useful. For this is why I like the project. For example, we may find one model is Richard is the CEO stocks, of the company, but terrible at predicting what's going to happen the stocks. And someone else may have the bank stocks just right, uh, but terrible on the tech stocks. And a third person might have the tech stocks just right. So we can create a meta model that incorporates the, the, the working parts of each of those sub models. The idea of crowdsourcing modeling existed before Numerai did. And the idea of using models to predict financial markets also existed before Numerai did. But the idea of putting them together didn't really exist. So this is what I talked to others in the space do. that were trying to harness the power of the crowd uh, for stock market intelligence, but all these other companies, none of them had figured out how to do it. The problem was you can't have a good data set and share it with the world. All of the good data that hedge funds use is deeply proprietary. Normally encryption kind of messes up data to such an extent that you lose all predictive structure after you encrypt something. But Numerai has a very special form of encryption that enables it to actually pass data to the, to the crowd, and that's the big uh, innovation of Numerai. People's biases, which sometimes humans put their biases in about particular stocks or particular sectors of industry. This way, they're dealing with a pure set of numbers, numerical indicators, uh, even though some of them may be news, they may be other things like price volume, but they're dealing with the numerical indicators without knowing what they mean. And, and that in itself was another breakthrough. This means that it's just a pure math problem. It's like a math competition. You don't know anything about finance. You don't know anything about hedge funds. You're some grad student in Tokyo who doesn't even, you don't have to speak English. And suddenly you can share your knowledge with Richard. Richard can make money in the stock market and pay you. I think it's very arrogant to assume that Wall Street has a monopoly on all the smartest data scientists. And I think that's not true. It allows tons of people from around the world to submit predictions to the fund and they get paid for doing so. It basically creates the capital structure and the execution structure. It democratizes that access to everyone. In theory, it has an unbeatable hedge fund because the, the number of people that are involved in the hedge fund is just far greater than any other hedge fund out there. So you'd expect automatically that it will do the best out of all of them. I was really intrigued by the use of combining machine learning and crowdsourcing. They're both powerful combinations to tap into brilliant minds and, and algorithms around the world. There's no question that Numai represents for me the convergence, and really an unexpected convergence, of exponentially growing technologies. The market is very efficient, and your prior, when you start a hedge fund, is that it's going to be very difficult. The way to think about efficiency is not really that, like, it's efficient or not. It's like, what is it efficient with respect to? And if you look at these data sets over many years, over 100 years, you can see, oh, okay, the market was, was pretty efficient back then, but actually, they were missing something. So now, the question is, what's the market not efficient with respect to? And we think that the answer is that it's something to do with AI. And so we're making something that can collect AI. The best hedge funds in the world have 200 or 300 employees. So how well could a hedge fund with 100,000 data scientists do? And uh, you know, that's what we're going to find out. So my opinion, this, could, this project could be the next big thing or it could be the biggest uh, mistake ever. Because you guys don't know. No one knows what happens with AI. So... With AI, yeah, it builds on information, but once those AI bots are built from the humans, whatever that AI bot builds, we don't know what it's gonna build because it's beyond the um, human, uh, beyond the human's way of thinking. Well, actually, I'm sure we have greater capabilities, but we only access about 5% of our brain. Um, it's, it's ridiculous, but we should definitely get on that 100%, right guys? <laughs> but um so that that's mainly what they're doing with the project um it, it's a cool project let me show you what uh numerai is doing with the stocks we'll play it on a, a quicker speed so you guys can see it network effect is a phenomenon where a service 
becomes more valuable when more people use it. Ah, uh, it's on Vimeo. Until today, Vimeo. those rails which once bravely spanned the mountain have become an interlocking network, binding together the far west, the southwest, and the south, linking them in turn with the... They do a really good job with their videos. I'll give them that. Compared to several other crypto projects. technology-driven networks replace bureaucratic hierarchies. And we think we are just at the very beginning of this trend. People who are creating the content are also the same people who are consuming the content. You are a node on the network. And that's really, really important. In 2008, uh, Satoshi Nakamoto created a, an amazing new protocol called Bitcoin, and this invention makes amazingly powerful incentive structures that cost a huge network of miners to come together and provide value. Anyone who holds Bitcoin has a strong incentive to make the network better. And so Bitcoin's hash power is larger than like the top 100 super. Augur, we'll five. talk about that project too. I really like Augur. Uh, and so when you think about applying this to uh, the finance markets. This is the guy who file coin. Massive hedge funds that are fighting against each other. No one really works together in finance. Everyone's it's very competitive. It's adversarial. There's uh, no collaboration. And so Numerai can transition this negative competition space into highly valuable collaboration. And so today Numerai is is releasing a brand new cryptocurrency on the Ethereum blockchain. And there's no uh, hedge fund with network effects, so we're going to try to be the first one. Everyone should just come together to one thing and create a ton of value together. So that's the incentive with uh, Numerai. You, when you stake Numerai or, well, if you guys are just wanting to speculate on the token, you'd just be holding it and expecting it to go up. And yeah, sure, there are times when it goes up, like uh, when it was listed on Coinbase, it pumped like it pumped like nuts and ham, man. It literally in nineteen bucks to, um, geez, what is that? Fifty-seven bucks. That's a three x. <laughs> That's crazy. So you guys are like, man, oh, it's a twenty dollar token. Why not like the ten cent ones? Guys, never look at the price of the token. That's not what you look at. You look at market cap. Look, it's only a hundred thirty nine million dollar market cap. That's really low. Bitcoin is over four hundred billion with a b like with a b b 400 billion 4000 times the size of this so i mean being 4000 times the size of this this is a tiny little project um but what they're doing is huge so they're trying to be a hedge fund but it's different from normal hedge funds so in the stock market it's a zero sum game one guy wins one guy loses that's how it works so one guy buys it at a super high price and then sells it at a super low price. Or it's the opposite. The guy buys it at a really low price and sells it to the sucker at a very high price. That's how it works. It's a zero-sum game. So Numerai is trying to separate that by having everyone collaborate in one network. But they have all this going for them. It's a great project. But this is what concerns me. The Rasher is their staking protocol for their AI platform. It's using NMR, um, how they pay out. So it's separate. So they have this AI model that's being built, getting all this information, getting all these people on board. All it's got to take is Richard to say, all right, thanks guys, appreciate all the information. I'm taking my company elsewhere. He just took all that information and now he has it all. That's my one concern about this project. So... Yes, it does have the pump of minerals to pump like crazy and go up. But if it gets too big, I don't find any incentive for him to stay with the protocol. He can just take all his information and leave. Sure, he's not going to be getting new information. But the AI protocols that have been developed by all the scientists have been developed and has all the information. So that's that's my main concern. So... Look, this is what it was talking about. Um, there's not a true, there is not true on the internet, which is entirely true. So anyone, like someone can do this video just like I'm doing and make their own video. That's why I always tell everyone, whether this is on my video, someone else's video, or any information you read, DOR, D-Y-O-R, do your own research. Guys, I highly encourage you to do that. No one is gonna give you the right information. 
the right answer. You can read, uh, you can watch another video that's like, oh, this uh, project is trash or this project is amazing or this project will 100x. No one knows. No one knows. So I'm just going to tell you about the project, what they do and what I think of it. Uh, side note, guys, if you guys like this content, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. We talk about more cryptocurrencies and different projects like this. I know the video is getting a little long. I'll try to cut it short a bit. But basically, they're trying to um, create instant trust with perfect strangers. Um, and, and it opens a surprising array of possibilities. So before you have someone like selling something and, oh, it's a thousand bucks for this webinar or a thousand bucks for this. And you're kind of like, hmm, is that true? So they offer 30 day guarantees or uh, whatnot. You all money back. Yeah, there's also some contingencies in it. But it's like that tries to break the trust barrier that's there. So that's why trust is so huge <clears throat> in the system. It's hard to build things and hard to grow because you can't trust anyone. Um, I, I mean, even when you think you trust them, you can't trust them. The, and, and all the time of my life and everything I've seen, I haven't found, well, I, I do trust my family. My family is the one people or the people that I do trust, but no one, you, you can't trust any more, anyone more than you can God or Jesus. So keep that guy, keep that in mind, guys. But sorry to get off topic, but well, that, that is the topic of life, bringing others to Christ. So uh, back to Numerai. Um, Numerai, a hedge fund that trades equities based on aggregation of thousands of predictions made by a global network of competing data scientists. Because each user stakes on their predictions and inaccurate, inaccurate predictions have their stakes destroyed, which is huge. So this incentivized, so everyone's doing this for the money. They aren't going to put out bad predictions because they'll lose money. So with this, this allows you to, uh, their Rasher uh, program, it allows you to have this model and stake with it and program with it because that's how they get paid. They get paid if their predictions are right. So if someone's like, oh yeah, I'm 100% sure on this um, prediction, I'm going to pony up with some NMR and they're going to get paid for it. And that causes the token to go up because they're staking the NMR. More people are like, oh wow, it's working. I need NMR. So you guys know how it goes. Supply, demand, or excess um, demand and very little supply equals crazy pump of minerals. So a rasher bay is a new marketplace for sourcing any kind of information. Make requests, informations like predictions, shares, whistleblowers, etc. Um, they did just make Numerai signals in October. It's an ongoing tournament to gather Russell 3000 stock predictions currently in beta. So predictions are staked, burned accordingly. So. Oh, that's also another thing. So they do give out rewards, but those people who are bad actors, they get their stakes burned. So keep that in mind. Um, yeah, see, punish bad. Um, so that that's a little bit about the project. I highly recommend taking a look at this. Um, you can read on Richard Crape. Here's his Twitter. You can check him out. Um, I, I, I like the guy. I kind of don't like him. Um, the is an unstoppable decentralized data this is introducing a rasher we just talked about this we'll speed it up so you guys can see it uh in my my main opinion about the guy um i mean he's he seems like a really smart guy he's got a huge head um <laughs> so i'm sure he's got a bunch of information in there look how big his head is i knew that people would contribute but models to data sets pretty smart needed. guy but i didn't think it was possible to crowdsource data I don't think a true information marketplace has worked yet because it's been challenging to prove to people that if they submit valuable data, they're guaranteed to be rewarded for it. Moreover, there hasn't been an immutable ledger that everybody can look back to. So like I said, no one can trust anyone. Like, just like this guy said, all the smart people are like, I got all this information, but I can't trust that person, what he's gonna do with it. And even if I did give the data, how am I gonna get paid? The guy's probably just gonna take my idea and run. Well, no, with Numeri, or Numeri, it allows the information to be encrypted and allows him to stake Numerai based on that pr prediction or, or that uh, information he's giving. And it allows him to make money from it. So he gets an equal amount in um, payment as he does in Numerai token. So uh, 26 dive, or not dive, but they'll use, they'll pay him out in the same concept. Like I think they use either die or they'll use a USDC or some sort of stable coin to pay out. Or they even pay back in uh, Numerai, um, which is uh, they'll 
pay it ba based on the same dollar value. Um, so you guys are asking, what's what's the difference between Augur and this project? Well, the difference is, is Augur is trading the thing that is being predicted. So say you're predicting that um, the Bucks will beat the Panthers in a football game. Well, you're trading based on that. With Rasher or with Numeri, you are selling your predictions. So you aren't really betting based on the predictions. So that's a good word for it, is you aren't betting based on it. You're selling the information and using that information, collaborating together. To see for sure that somebody has made accurate predictions over time. It turns out that cryptocurrency is a couple of blockchains solve both of those problems. And that's the root of what Erasure is getting at. In economics, there is this term called market collapse. And market collapse is when there's no way to discern the quality of something. Uh, that there ends up being no market for it. Um, and that's what's happening in financial data at the moment, um, especially prediction data. If someone sends me an email, I have all these predictions, I'm really, really good at predicting the stock market, I would immediately delete the email. Um, I can't trust that that person is giving me, uh, that it has anything that's, that's any good. But there probably is someone in the world who could send me an email like that and would actually be legitimate. So if you can use a technology to solve this problem of market collapse, you can get the people who are very good to actually earn full price for their predictions. Without staking, your incentive would be to submit a million predictions, and on the off chance that three of them hit and you got a payout, then why not submit as many as you could? Staking makes it so that there are not only positive economic incentives for submitting. So you guys heard of those webinars or those different things like, oh, hey, I'm uh, like Steve Sugarwood. Um, yeah, we're going to have a huge stock market tank. And then the stock market goes up, stock market goes up. Then he makes out something like, oh, we're going to have a huge melt up. Uh, just throwing out a bunch of different predictions. Hey, he may be wrong. He's not penalized for it. But if he's right, everyone goes to him like, oh, wow, awesome. That, that's the whole point is it's like there's no he's not penalized for it. So he's not obviously he has his own investments. And um, I'm sure he I, I can't really confirm or deny whether he makes money on it because I, I don't know. Obviously, he's doing something right. But he can put out as many predictions as he wants. I mean, if he was really that good at it, why would he tell everyone else about what to invest in when he could just do it himself and keep all the money for him? <laughs> so the reason he does it is he does it for the money. He understands people pay for his um, uh, predictions and pays for his information and his research. And he understands on his end, he can make a lot of money doing it. That's why he does it. Yeah, also negative economic incentives. And this is one of the main problems with the internet right now is there really are no negative economic incentives. It costs next to nothing to send an email. So if you want something that's very high quality, it turns out there has to be some cost and or punishment. Next to nothing. I don't know what email Richard's you're using, email but my email is free. And uses Numerair as its token. So what Numerair has done over the last year is show that people want to stake uh, Numerair tokens on predictions. And that when they do stake them, it's a sign that those predictions are going to work really well. Now, if we could extend this to other financial data, for example, predictions on crypto, and extend it to other hedge funds, so that other hedge funds can use Numerair to buy data feeds, then that's a whole uh, different game. And uh, it will totally decentralize Numerair and allow anybody to use it, any hedge fund to, to buy data with it, and any data provider to submit to it. Or it could be better than Numerair. As long as they keep a rasher with Numerai, then it's going to be good. But those are my thoughts on Numerai. Um, you guys, or Numerair, whatever. Um, let's just call it NMR Crypto. Um, that, that's what I like about it. Those are my thoughts on the project. Those are my concerns about the project. Um, tell me what you guys think of the project. Uh, tell me, leave, leave in the comments what you think. Uh, where do you think it's going? Uh, how much does it concern you that the um, the founders can just leave it? Yeah, it's centralized right now, but when they decentralize it, they can just say, hey, forget you guys, thanks. So it's something that's like, hmm, what what can be created from this? What, what can happen? So leave the comments below. Tell me what you guys think. If you guys like this video, hit that like button. Uh, if you didn't like it, go ahead, smash that dislike button. Tell me what you guys think. Tell me what I missed on. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you guys um, taking a look at the channel. Um, and I hope this brings uh, this project to light and uh, tells people what they think and helps you door or say no thanks. Do your own research or pass on it. So thanks for watching guys and see you in the next one.